Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends. Today is Thursday, September 7th, 2006, and we'll go ahead and take a look at how the markets closed today. A uh, little bit more pullback, which was not unexpected, is what we got today. And I'm looking at the S&P 500 right now. So we've got the, uh, you know, this, this level, a lot of people have been looking at this. And this is the prior level of resistance that had been important. It did act as support once, and we saw it with the rising 10-day moving average met there uh, as well, giving it uh, more importance the last time it tested there. And now, uh, again, we have more importance because we've got a rising 20-day moving average. As you can see, we closed just above that rise and 20-day moving average as well. Um, I pointed that out yesterday that that would be a likely target for the markets to come down to, and that's exactly what we got today. So the markets are doing what they're supposed to uh, in an uptrend, and that is rally up to the 10, uh, rally up, pull back to a rising 10-day moving average. The 10 is above the 20, the 20 is above the 50, so we get the next pullback down towards the 20-day moving average. We saw uh, in a pretty good increase in volume here today, as we also saw some volatility as well, and that's good to see because we had it, the market down at an important level. Now, um, early on, the market recovered quickly from the sell-off, and we we saw that where that occurred was near, you know, a little bit above actually, uh, I'm sorry, below the uh, daily S2. It did go lower than that. Um, but the market was able to recover and find support at the daily VWAP, uh, VWAP on the uh, SPY here. And that's where we saw a real nice rally. It looked like a low volume pullback, but then the sellers were able to regain control and push it back below the daily VWAP. So now two days in a row, we've seen the market uh, closing below the daily VWAP, meaning that people are getting stuck long uh, with, with losing positions. We had also mentioned yesterday that the uh, level of potential resistance that it would have been nice to see the market close above yesterday was at uh, 130.60, uh, and, and that's about right up to where the market did rally today. So the market rallied up, found that level of prior support in here to act as resistance, and we've got all these moving averages heading lower. So that should have told you it was not a rally to be trusted. It's still early. What we need is we need for a little bit, you know, there's two ways that markets correct. They correct either through price or they correct through time. And maybe the correction price-wise is over because we've tested this bigger level on the uh, daily time frame as well as that rising 20-day moving average. Now it appears the market needs a little bit of time to heal itself here. So that's where we are on the S&P 500. Uh, we're at a pretty important juncture, and we saw volume increase, and, and that's good. We want to see some conviction and some, uh, uh, you know, shares changing hands in there to create an important level of support. Now, if the market does continue lower down below 29, uh, 129, I think it's going to pay to get a lot more defensive in here. And, and, and we've seen, you know, this, you know, how do you draw the uptrend line? Do you take it off this low and say the uptrend line was broken two days ago? Or do you draw it off of the, uh, the, the level right here off this lows? And the bottom line is the way a trend line ought to be drawn is it ought to capture the essence of the trend. And a lot of times we have extreme moves that a lot of times I'll just throw those away for the point of drawing a, a trend line. Um, but not, you know, the trend line isn't where you want to buy or where you want to necessarily sell anyways. It's just a reference point, just like moving averages. You didn't want to buy at the 20-day moving average today. It might have worked, but that's not the point. It's a reference point to compare price to. That's all it is. It gives us an objective way of looking at how the market is responding to these widely watched levels. Now, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, broke above and closed above this resistance level from the late June highs, and then yesterday pulled back pretty severely. I was looking for a move back down towards the uh, 38.20 level, and below that we've got 37.90 that's going to be important. But we did get a test of that rising 20-day moving average. It's too early to call it a successful test. All we're doing is seeing a little bit of increase in volume near this level of, of important, uh, you know, technical importance, and that means that something's going on. Let's see if the sellers are are going to, you know, maintain control or if the buyers are going to be able to to retake the control. And again, here's that uh, trend line on the hourly time frame. Each one of these candles represents one hour. And when we look at a 30-minute time frame, we can see that maybe a little bit more clearly as we saw that break yesterday. And that's about where we had the resistance as well as it being this prior level of resistance over here and support. So all these levels kind of come together. And you see that's also where we have 
the uh, you know the 10 day moving average as well now looking at a five uh, day moving average here we've got that declining again now and we've got this green longer term moving average declining we've got these uh, you know we broke a lower low late in the day so it's too early to call it a successful test I still think that 3820 looks pretty reasonable as far as a uh, level of support. And if we look at a daily time frame, or you know, let's even go to the weekly time frame, again, we can see here these levels uh, that we'd been focusing on. And that, you know, trend line, if I, you know, depends on how you draw it, whether you're saying, you, you want to say it's uh, holding above it or below it. So what we have to focus on here on the bigger picture is that we do have the 200-day moving average, the 150-day moving average, and the 100-day moving average all declining. So it's possible that this is something that, that may fail here. A lot of stocks don't seem to have the uh, follow-through that they probably ought to. But if you take the highs over here from this move in late April and or early April, near 43.12, to the lows that we saw back in uh, mid-July, and we put Fibonacci on there, you can see that the market has rallied 50%. Now, the 40.23 is approximately where we see that 200-day moving average as well. So that will be our, our upside test if this, or, or target rather, if this test of the 20-day moving average holds and the buyers are able to gain control. You see tomorrow as being pretty much a, another uh, back and forth type day and um, a great day to, to, to middle of the day at 11.30 Eastern to sign up for that free class uh, that I'm going to be talking about uh, tomorrow that kind of outlines some of my strategy and give you a, a better look at that. Each day I give you little snippets of what I do, but if you really want, if you're really interested in learning how to do this rather than having it spoon fed to you, uh, you know, be sure to sign up for that on the link just below this posting. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at some of the other indices. Let's take a look at the IWM, the Russell 2000. And here we see that this market's pulling back a little bit deeper than really I had hoped for. Um, it's, it's, you know, I was hoping 70 and a half might hold. It, it, it closed below there. You know, maybe it's a shakeout. It's too early to tell. But like I said yesterday, it's not a good time to be aggressive, getting aggressive on the long side or the short side. If, however, this low gets taken out right here, it could be setting up for a bigger failure on the bigger time frame. So we have to be very careful in here. The market remains at an important level. I'm still giving it the benefit of the doubt because the rising 50-day moving averages, but we have to keep our minds open to the possibility of a failure here as well. So let's hope that tomorrow we can see the buyers regain control and we really can get a, a, a close on the IWM above 70 and a half would be nice to see. And maybe even it recaptured the 10-day moving average up near 71, that would really be nice to see uh, on a closing basis. The semiconductors, the SMH, they pulled back right down to about where they were supposed to, uh, which was the rising 20-day moving average as well. We had a big pickup in volume. Volume typically increases at turning points and diminishes with the trend. So perhaps this is where the, the buyers and sellers are locking horns and the, and the uh, buyers are going to regain control. It's too early to tell because tomorrow's volume could be even bigger. We only know in hindsight. Um, but in order for this market to get any healthier, uh, the semiconductors are going to need to get above 3350. And it's not going to happen tomorrow, I don't think, because we've got this five-day moving average that's still declining. So tomorrow is going to be another day to kind of take it easy uh, trading, I think, and, and be patient. Let the opportunities uh, come to us. And... Uh, you know, trade them as they set up. Let's take a look here at some of the stocks we've been mentioning. Finally, yesterday, Halliburton started breaking down. And today, I covered my uh, position, my, my bearish bet on the uh, puts in there uh, for two reasons. One, not as important, but it came down and retraced two-thirds of this retracement up here. So it's pulled back two-thirds of that. Secondly, uh, intraday today, it got down to uh, daily S2. And... I just don't trust listed stocks, so I decided it was time to move on. And let's take a look. Here's that S2 level. So I'm now out of these puts. 
uh, they made for a nice trade, and hopefully some of you were able to make a trade in there as well and, and uh, make some money off it. Mclone, uh, we had shorted this one at 29.90 over here uh, about two days ago, three days ago, and yesterday I had suggested that you'd lower your stop down to 28.65. That occurred right in here, and that was good for a gain of about a dollar 25 in there, about three and a half, four percent uh, over the course of two, three days. So nice trade in Mclone. Now it looks like it's time to move the sideline. Uh, for IMCL. Now, the stocks that we looked at last night, I'd only had one long potential idea, and that was GNTX. The way I'd suggested a purchase in here was, first of all, to look for a pullback down towards $14.55. We got that. Then I said we want to wait for it to clear $14.65 before purchasing it. So you can see we had that initial weakness, but again, this is why you don't buy weakness. Wait for the buyers to regain control because it continued weak. And now there's no reason to look at Gentex. It looks like this is a failed move. And I'm no longer looking at this as a uh, potential long side trade. Uh, if you're in it, I think you should have been stopped out today and uh, moved to the sidelines. There's still a lot of dangerous setups in this market. And, uh, you know, by sidestepping the dangerous ones and being in cash, you're getting at you're, you're being ahead by just preserving your capital. It doesn't seem as much fun as making money. But when the setups aren't there, just don't force the trades. Baidu symbol B-I-D-U. What we were looking for in here was a rally up first towards seventy seven dollars and thirty five cents to seventy seven dollars and fifty cents. And what we had was uh, initially we had a gap lower. So that invalidates the trade however then the market did rally up to that level to that zone that we were looking for it rallied up there and then my instructions were once it gets up to that level then to sell it short on weakness so uh, that didn't occur so now uh, there should have been no position taken in BIDU so uh, sidelines were the place to be in that stock as well as it closed higher SOHU S-O-H-U now I, I shorted this one early on uh, Despite it not doing what I instructed for a uh, for an entry, I shorted it over in here, and I covered right in there. And I covered because Cena was going, and GIGM, and a couple of the Chinese stocks were moving. But what we were looking for was a rally to twenty one dollars and sixty cents, and then to sell it short as it breaks back down below. 2145 with our stop then at 2192 that never occurred so officially there was no trade in it like i said i did short the stock thank god i covered it uh quickly and i think i covered it for about a five or ten dollar gain which you know after commissions what is that it's a break even maybe down a couple of bucks but i avoided this big rally in here as the stock went a dollar a dollar 20 higher from that level so that's going to wrap it up for now. Uh, I guess we don't have any open positions, which is probably a good thing in this market environment as it searches for some stability here tomorrow. And um, again, I'm going to repeat it that last week, everyone was the week everyone took off. The people that took off that week last week missed a great trading week. So far, this week stinks, and we got one day left, and I'm not looking for much more to happen. Um, I'll be back this evening with another video. Thanks for listening.